This is the Everyday Hustle Show, where our number one priority is self-development. Each week, we will dive into insightful topics that encourage you to push your thinking beyond average. Smash that subscribe button and tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. We're hot. We're hot. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. What episode is this? 94? Yo, it's 93. 93? It's 90 Trace. We got a very special guest tonight. Yo, special Andrew guest. wanted to be the 100th episode, so I told him that we would just record this as the 100th episode and then release it then and then do something else for the 93rd episode, but then I was like... Oh, I was about to say, you can't... Well, you, I was about to say, if you're going to do yeah. that, you can't freaking announce it. Nah, so we're not doing it. Not doing it, dude. How I feel many? like 93 is still good. We yeah. might even... We, Come look, in. Andrew, we might not even make it to, ni- to Yeah, you never know, dude. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we got we to gotta freaking live in the moment. 93, yeah. it's big. Yeah. I mean, we could walk out of the street and get hit by a school bus. It's Halloween, dude. You never know. Yeah. Tonight is a night that it can I was happen. playing Michael Myers music on the way over here. You feel me? So, Jesse's... Jesse? Jess? He's gone, dude. Jesse's somewhere here. He's gone. We're just hanging in Jesse's backyard right now. Smoking a Padrone, Principe. Christian, what are you smoking on? Yeah, I got me, a, I got me a little tatuaje over here. You feel me? What's the What's the cigar though? Dude, I honestly don't. I don't know. It, it don't have a name on it. Nothing it's got compares some, uh, to what we smoked last week, huh? The monsters. Yeah, dude. Yo, Great my dude. Yo, my dude Jesse over here. Shout out to Jesse. He, he said, just "Yo, I don't have an ashtray, but I got a paper plate with water for y'all." He just brought out a paper plate. Oh, now he gonna light Dixie. a candle to scent the mood and whatnot. Dixie paper plate. Do you, do you put your uh, pop tarts or your uh, waffles on a plate in the toaster? Shit, no, but I might have to. Dude, what happens if you put your t- waffles on a plate with water in the toaster? Paper plate catches on fire. Uh. He's saying because he's saying because we're about to ash onto this paper plate right now. That's why I put the water. Yo, on. my dude over here put two drops of water in this pl- paper plate. What if I ash on this side with no water in it? You ash where there's water. <laughs> so <laughs> when you got when everyone's listening to this, it's going to be Sunday. But tonight's Thursday is trick or treat, and we were just talking before the show how just trick or treat is just pretty lame, and um, you know there's no kids out here. Yeah, it's not the same. And then we thought, like, oh, well, we were just, you know, I was going up to random people's houses earlier before with the, with the, with the youngins, the chitlins and chitlins, and you know, it's like chits. It's weird. Everybody that I walked up to that I didn't know, I was like, this dude's a murderer, you know? Yeah, this guy. This dude's this gonna guy touch somebody's kid some, yeah. at some point in the night. This guy's. But it's messed pegging. up that you think like that, you know? Yeah. It's me too, movement, dude. People are coming out about their uh, aggressors. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we were kids, <laughs> Could be. when we were kids, like, there's not a worry in the world about any of that shit, you know? You just went wherever, did whatever. There's no razor, did you check you, the oh, razor blades? I, maybe it's like anything else, but just because social media and the news exposes it so much on a grander scale, you know? Yeah. I mean, nowadays, yeah, like, if you... Uh, this is great. Something We're doing happens. this with two microphones, and everyone else is talking, and there's only people are only going to hear two sides of it. This is, I just said let's I said let's do it at my house. We had four microphones, and Jess is like, "No, I got to hand out candy to trick or treaters." And there's no one showed but up. But he's had two trick or treaters the whole night. No one showed up. No, literally, no one showed up. Hey, dude. Yeah, Jesse. Uh, Chris See, Chris still has got to learn mic. microphone etiquette. You know. Yeah, you don't. You don't he's talk. Unless, look at me and go, and I'll, and I'll be like, "All right, Chris, here you go." You don't talk unless Put you the have mic the microphone. In our mouth, dude. If Jesse, you if you talk in a again. setting without the mic, nobody's gonna hear you. Yeah, Chris, you gotta freaking you gotta know etiquette. Etiquette, etiquette. Yeah, dude, freaking shit, man. I think it's just a lot hey, of rape, a lot of rape these days. Yeah, but anyway, why don't you introduce our guest, yeah. Andrew <laughs> Nolfi? <laughs> He's like, I don't know if that's his last name. Nolfi. This is Andrew's uh, esteemed brother-in-law. Not estranged, esteemed. Um, why don't you give a little biopic, Drew? Yeah, I'll, I'll lay it down. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put the mic over to you, but don't don't grab it. Just just I'm just gonna ask you a couple questions, okay? How you doing tonight? Doing great. All right, good to know. Where are you from? New Jersey. 
This is like a news interview, you know? <laughs> Are you born and raised there? Born and raised. All right. Have you ever been on a podcast before? No. This is his first podcast Shit. appearance. So, um, yeah, Andrew is my brother-in-law, and the reason why I wanted to have him come out on the show, uh, obviously... People want to get something if they're going to invest, you know, thirty minutes or an hour into the show, and what? What? We could share this mic. <laughs> okay. Oh, so me and Jesse share, and you and Andrew share. Okay, Jess, come sit next to me. So, where was I? Um. Um, oh, so if you're going to invest 30 to 60 minutes in listening to something, I want to provide value to, you know, and I always think that people don't listen to the podcast, but then I listen, I log into the stats and I'm like, wow, you know, like there's a good amount of people that listen to it, you know? So if you're out there listening to it, to the podcast, you know, we appreciate you one and I'm hoping to provide you with something that you can learn from, grow and apply it in your life and get further than you were, you know, today or yesterday. Um, but Andrew is uh, Andrew's a government guy. You know what I'm saying? He knows some top secret shit. Top secret. You know, maybe some of it he can expose. Maybe some of it he can't. But, um, um, I always have uh have had a lot of respect for Andrew and his career path, and you know the choices that he made to get to where he is now, and I'm very impressed with, you know, what he does for a living. And I just want to kind of. You know, I want him to tell us how he got to where he, where he, um, where he is now. You know what it was like growing up and and all that stuff. So this is going to be like a full, full life story for Andrew to to put it out there, um, and uh, and tell everybody you know how he got to where he is. So, um, let's just start where you're at right now, and then we'll rewind and build up to where that point is. So, tell the people what what it is that you do you know what's your hustle what's your everyday hustle what do you do for a living all right so we're going backwards i want to yeah I, well i want to no first i want to tell them what you do just and then okay. i want to know then we're going to rewind all the way back and tell everyone how you got to where okay. you are with that so all right so uh currently i am a one of the chief engineers for the united states navy on one of their big time programs right now that you probably hear in the news uh, for the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier. I was, cause, cause um, you, I know that you put a lot of, um, you were on the ship and like had a lot to do with like the actual, you know, building of certain mechanics of it and all that. I follow them on Facebook and the other day they posted something that was like, drive it like you stole it. And it's like the whole ship like is turning and the whole thing is yep. sideways and it's yep. just freaking. These are massive, massive. I mean, how big is the ship? So uh, that ship that you hold the mic closer to your mouth so like that, this, yeah. 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 So that ship that you saw um, is just shy of about twelve hundred feet long. It's uh, about a hundred thousand tons, um, and the flight deck is right around four acres of U.S. sovereign territory. Doesn't make sense to me. How something that's a hundred thousand tons, hundred thousand tons, can not just sink. That is just mind-boggling to me. Everyone, everyone always says that when they look at it, based off of the flight deck protruding at different angles over the center line, it does look like it should just tip over one side. What's it made out of? Steel. Majority of it's steel. A lot of other stuff though. But like, what gives it the buoyancy? Is it just like packed full of like air pockets in the center that allows it to float? So there's uh, things. Similar to uh, like larger yachts, they have ballast tanks, so we can fill the ballast with water based in certain locations. Um, same thing, we have tons of JP5, which is jet fuel, so that's also stored in the ship. So we use that for different, um, you know, weight differences to keep it structurally that's fucking crazy. centered. So crazy. I'm so I don't understand how a stand up jet ski floats. <laughs> that's fiberglass too yeah. so growing up did you have an idea as to what you wanted to do or be like let's say you know nobody knows what the fuck's going on in middle school let's say like high school like going into like college like did you have a like a 
Were you like, you know, in, did like engineering interest you or like did you even know what it was at that point? Yeah, I did. Um, I would say it was probably one of the one percent that had an idea of what they wanted to do when they grew up but uh where i'm at now versus what i thought i wanted to do pre-high school um not exactly the, that same path how did you be how did you how do you think you got that like one percent how were you well i grew up in a navy family okay um so the original plan was to fly jets for the navy growing up mm. um, i spent almost every summer from seven years old up until 12, 13, going to the Naval Academy for sports camps, um, just hanging out there. And uh, I'll leave it at that so that when we go back to the biography, I'll go back to the rest of the story of why I did not go to the Naval Academy. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so sports in high school or anything? or Yeah, I uh, was a varsity letter winner in football lacrosse winter and spring track and wrestling jeez holy toledo dude yo drew what did you do any freaking any sports were you band band okay okay <laughs> no no i was uh, i was swim i was swimming too damn dude that's yeah. like some square shit <laughs> some real <laughs> no, freaking white people I shit right i played baseball but i was literally left bench drew was all american lifeguard too it's very sporty i was all american left bench American lifeguard. I literally fell asleep on the job as a lifeguard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I. Mm-hmm. I saved a lot of lives though too. So, I mean, everybody's dozed off on their job every once in a while, right? If you say <laughs> if you say no to that, you're full of shit. Exactly. Exactly. So. Okay. So. Um, you know, it's so crazy that you guys, I don't know if you guys, Jesse and Christian know this, but you, you guys grew up in the, the Grand Woodlands house? Yeah. Okay. So Sp- Kevin Smith and Andrew were neighbors all throughout their younger years. They lived literally on the same street. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Yo, shout out to Space Turk. Shout Kevin out to Space Smith. Turkey. If you're listening, you don't listen because you're a fucking piece of mother hold on is, is space turkey kevin Twi- smith twitch yeah twitch okay they twi- used to call twi- him twitch in twitch the day, was yeah. his nickname back yeah. in the day i don't know yeah. if it still stands so all right so um yeah and for people who don't know that's i guess that's considered tom's river i guess but it's probably like the north side of yeah north yeah, north like, over tom's kind of like tom's river like manchester border i guess something like that but um yeah, what was it, what was it like growing up there? I mean, I, that's kind of where I mean we kind of grew up in the same area, but I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of funny that I never knew who you were because of the town that we grew up in. It being so so big, it was what four high schools. Yeah, four high schools in our town. So well, no, uh, south, east, and north, and Mondon, right? Yeah, I guess. Are you I, not I even? Guess, well, that could be a different topic. It's a even, private. Don't even school, consider right? that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Another but, option for our town, but um, yeah. yeah. About 100,000 people. I think his point was that it's not a lot. Yo, I had one high school in my town. What are you talking about? Not I had one high school in my <laughs> town, too, but I'm from... <laughs> These dudes got four high schools. Suburbia, Pennsylvania. You're from fucking Idaho That's or some shit. That's what I'm saying. There's one, fucking, there's one fucking... Where are you from? One high school. Mo- you're a Mormon, right? No. No. <laughs> not. It's true. You got that? I wasn't lucky. 100. <sighs> Probably something like that. 160 something. So I might have been 150 I, that started, but 100 only actually made it. All right. So I went to North. Andrew went to South. My graduating class had 780 kids. That's a huge fucking high school. So we didn't even have a football team. And we were every, that small. Yeah, and every we every you know, freshman through senior was 700 to 800 kids. Yeah, I went to a, I went to a tiny school. There were kids that drove like tractors to school on like the last day of school and rode horses and shit. Not a joke. Yeah, the old horse and buggy brigade. Um, all right. So, I fucking hate the the, co- the topic of college. No, I like the topic, but I hated my experience with it. I know you probably had a very different experience. So, did you um did you know where you wanted to go to school? Uh, I had it narrowed down to about five schools. 
Uh, you got then, into all of them? I got into all of them. Jeez, buddy's a freaking scholar uh, over here, boys. I had, I had our, I forget the guy's name at the time, New Jersey senator. I had his official letter to go to the Naval Academy. How'd you get then, that? Uh, you have to write. Dated to, his, you gotta his, write his to tr- daughter or something? No, no, <laughs> no. You gotta, you gotta write to, you gotta write to Trenton. It was like a whole part of the Naval Academy's application process to get it rolling. It's pretty much his endorsement. So why didn't you end up going to the Naval Academy? <laughs> I went on a recruiting trip to Penn State, and I was like, "Yeah, this is where I want to be." Because of the party scene, right? Party scene, the girls. <laughs> um, Naval Academy is just all sausage, straight up, right? <laughs> no, there's, <laughs> there's there's sausage and vagine, but there's more <laughs> there's more sausage there. Um, and I would but say, you, being at the time, you're only I was only seventeen. But you, but you ain't going to no keggers at the Naval Academy, right? No, it's no. strict and very strict. high and tight. And uh, I think the Iraqi War had like just started at that point in time. And yeah, so your mom, mom was probably like, you're not going there. Talking to my family members that were veterans, they were kind of like, eh, you sure you want to do this? And yeah. hearing that from them kind of was like, I should rethink this through. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, being 17, you really don't know what you want to do. Like I said, yeah. we, we talked about, yeah, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but you really don't. No one does. Yeah. I just think that parenthood has such like a big play on it. You know, you kind of just like your parents kind of like shove you in the direction that, you know. Which isn't a bad thing. Sometimes you, no, need, to not push, at all. you need to push off of off that cliff. Of course. To, to... I told you the other night, there's a thing that I always, whenever I'm in a new situation and it's gotten me through every situation up until this point in my life is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. Because if you are comfortable, more than likely... You're just wasting talent, and uh, change is good. Absolutely. I'm dealing with uncomfortability and change a lot of both in my life, and I just I just, I, I thrive. I'm going to thrive in it, and I just have that mindset, you know, that it's, it's you know, it's hard, but it's going to be worth it, you know? Um, but this isn't about me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um you you rep Penn State to the fullest. I do. His fucking Wi-Fi network is we are Penn State, I think, right? It, it's just we are. It's just we are. Because <laughs> that's, their, that's everyone, their motto, right? Everyone probably tries to put the password in his Penn State, that's but it doesn't exactly work. exactly I was going to say. What's the password? Then? <laughs> yeah, no, I... Uh, you don't rep Bloomsburg, Drew? What the fuck, man? <laughs> you hate it? What the... I wonder why, dude. Hmm. Yeah, I rep, I rep Penn State real hard. I rep them even harder when they're doing really good in football, so I can talk talk a lot right now. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm a USC fan, straight up. Never Shut been. The fuck never up, tried to Chris. go. But hey, USC, if you're listening, man, y'all trying to give give your boy a scholarship, you know what I'm saying? Just Yeah, get him he got all of something. You know what I'm saying? Hook me up. Who, Andrew? Hook me up. Do you fucking play uh mm, sports, college, football? Any and sports? Wrestled. Wrestled. Yeah. Walk, walked on. Yep. Wrestle Christian right now. <laughs> he'll fucking, he'll take you out. You get a scholarship? I got partial. Partial? Yes. I oh, partial. shit. Christian, there's a chance. Yo. Yo, so, so you had a partial scholarship. Okay, so you're 17. You're like, not really sure what you want to do, but you thought you wanted to go to maybe to the Naval Academy, but then you, like you said, you talked to your parents, you kind of got a little bit of a different shift in, in thinking. And so at that point, when you first got to the, like the dorm or whatever at Penn, what was that feeling like as far as, you know, you're, you've been living with your parents, I'm sure for a majority of your life, what was that moment like? Uh, freedom. <laughs> There's the only other way to put it. You could freaking... Because, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You could spank that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my mom's listening probably. <laughs> it was it was a uh, experience. Love like, you, mom. It wasn't far from home. It's four. It's a four hour ride from home. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean they they walk out and you're on your own and you know, it's a lot of money to go to college. Yeah. Um, so partial scholarship and then so how much um did you? What was tu- what's tuition there? Uh, at the time it was double for out of state. 
because it was a state school. I want to say it was about 28K a year. Yeah, so about 14000 a semester. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You took loans or for the difference no. of the scholarship? No. So Parents um, had it covered? Parents had it covered. Yeah. Um, so I was very fortunate for that, but, um, yeah. Oh, I'm listening cause I, that, that's why I'm listening to this. Um, the, I'm, well reading, listening, it's called the, like, the total money makeover. It's about this guy who like is, um, just all about like not living in debt, you know, and, and, uh, paying for everything in cash. And, and like, if you're smart, like even now starting at like 32 to 35, like if you're smart, there's ways that you can get it paid for, for your kids without having to have them to borrow to be set up to to fail because that's like a lot of what's happening and a lot of controversy in this student loan shit there's a lot of controversy you know but i mean the bottom line is is you know people are taking out all kinds of loan to go to school when i he compared a really interesting comparison it's like if an 18 year old you know um with no credit tries to get like a car loan or a credit card they have a hard time because they have no credit right but an 18 year old with no credit and no job and no income can get a hundred thousand dollars for school with the blink of an eye. You know, right. I just thought that was really interesting when you laid it out like that. And it's like, yeah, you're right. You know, and then what life skills are they going to have when they're done? You know, but it's a lot, you know, they'll yeah. have a lot of life skills, but it's just about, you know, how far are you willing to go into debt to right. get the, uh, the degree and what are you going to do with it when you get out? You know? Um, but anyway, Tell us how, you know, you kind of, I think it's, see, I never knew that you were going to go to the Naval Academy. That's really cool because you wanted to be a pilot. But the way I see it now is you probably have it just as good, if not better than a pilot in the Navy, because you get to fly in the planes, you get to work on the ship, you get to, you know, earn decent money with great benefits and you don't have to be away from your family for long length, extended periods of time. Was that, was that always the plan? Uh, no, that wasn't always the plan. So I actually got hooked up with the Navy my junior year of college. I saw a poster in our electrical engineering building for a uh, summer internship with the Office of Naval Research. And uh, I applied, got selected. And before I went back for my senior year, they liked the work that I was doing for them and they'd given me a job offer. So it ended up working out really great going back my senior year, not having to worry about career fair or anything like that. I had a job waiting for me right out the door, but uh, I didn't really know exactly what I would be doing. What did that job start at? Money-wise? Yeah. Uh, I want to say it was, it was kind of a weird thing because I got hired on through this presidential bill. So it was like a, it was like a internship program, even though I had my degree for two and a half years. Okay. So I think I came on at like, like prove yourself type came period. on at like 60,000 yeah. and then six months I got a $10,000 bonus or raise. And then every year after that, it was like an extra five to $6,000. And yeah. I think at the end of it, so that's good. I mean, it, yeah, that that's good. I mean, most people are at that point would come out with somewhere around a hundred thousand in debt, you know, and if you could start right. making 60 and climbing right up from there, I mean, that's, you're going to eventually be in a good place. So right. that's awesome. Um, kind of goes back though to like your life skills. Like I would say you yeah. got life skills. You also could probably get life lessons yeah. whether or not you did good or you failed um, and you had to drop out. But I think there is a point now with the cost of education where just use an example. I'd say if you were becoming a teacher making 30 to $40,000 a year coming out of college, um, and you and they pretty much make you go and get a master's, which is another thirty to forty thousand dollars on top of that. It might not be cost effective to do that to have two hundred thousand right. dollars worth of debt to be making that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say it ha- it has drastically changed because I'm almost ten years out of college now. So yeah. the cost from ten years ago to what it costs. Yeah, it's now, a crazy inflation. I'm I'm actually starting to see like the way that we're hiring people, not sailors or officers, just people off the streets is um, like Votech or skill positions mm-hmm. where they get like a two year cert for something um, mm-hmm. and they make damn good money. Yeah. So college isn't 
Oh. Sorry. But he just straight up, <laughs> he straight up just took the mic out of his hand. I was just gonna say, so college isn't a, <laughs> an everything kind of thing. Chris, you're fucked up. Dude. No, I'm I'm over here. Sorry, I'm over here multitasking. He's texting, and then all of a sudden he just walk, reaches over and just fucking snakes the boy in mid I'm fucking sentence. My bad, my bad, my bad. No, I had two different thoughts. This and and that, but no, I was just gonna ask <laughs> you because um you brought up a good point, which was you know you, you saw something, you saw that that. Uh, poster and it kind of you know got you thinking as to uh, or like it, it sparked and it, it and it kind of uh, influenced you in a way to where you at least wanted it to learn and, and kind of you know see what it was about and you know like you like we're talking about now the the whole idea of like you're 17 and to make a decision that, that's going to cost fucking you know 30 40 50 even sometimes more thousand dollars you know what I'm saying? And you're not even 100% sure if that's even what you want to do or if that's even going to pay you well once you get out. And that's what a lot, a lot of people are seeing now is that they're graduating from these, you know, long-term colleges and then all of a sudden there's no job, there's no market, there's no money to be made and they're just stuck with this debt. So, I mean, like, just for anyone listening that's maybe young or whatever, what advice would you offer them if they're, like, you know, thinking about going to college and they're, like, not really too sure and now they're starting to think maybe because of what you just said, what would you tell them? Chris, you're boating hard. I would say just be smart on the degree that you select. Um, Like for me, I originally went in chemical engineering and then realized that most of those jobs are overseas. Um, (laughs) So that wasn't for me, so I switched to electrical, but engineering degree, there's always going to be a need for engineers. so there's a lot of other jobs out there that there's always going to be a need for accountants. There's always a need for business degrees. Um, you know, if you're thinking about something that might be, you know, off the beaten path, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, a lot changes, you know, in a year or two or even four years. If you come in as a freshman four years from now, that degree might not get you the job that you think you're going to get freshman year. Touche. Fucking touche. Yeah, and if for some reason, like, <clears throat> I actually know my my buddy Josh. I don't know if you ever met him. He's a he was on the podcast. He's a mechanical engineer. Okay. For Siemens. Yep. A, a, you know, multi million dollar, probably multi billion dollar global company. Tr- trillion you know? trillion dollar company. Trillion. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> and he works you know remote, you know, so very different lifestyle than than what you have, but definitely along the same career path. And it's nice to know that. If for some reason something ever happened with the government or whatever that you can, there's definitely other avenues that you can go for employment. So what exactly do you do as an electrical engineer right now? Well, I'm technically not an electrical engineer anymore, but um, when I... That's what you're major. That's when, what you majored I, when in? When I majored in okay. it, um, I was doing... So there's, a, there's many specialized areas in electrical engineering um i was doing controls so motherboards different types of hardware software making sure that they talk you get an input and you're looking for a specific output of it what are you working on now um right now i'm pretty much running um the arresting gear and the new catapult system so more of like Project manager, systems engineer, um, the whole big picture. Lots of moving parts instead of just one. Is that more mechanical or more electrical or ca- kind of both, it's, right? It's both. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of different engineering disciplines in one, and it's just managing the whole big picture. What's like, what's like the engineer's motto? Like, do you all have like a motto or like something like, like, I don't know. You know what I'm we, saying? We, like, we, we, we do. It might sound corny. So uh, the Navy never sleeps. So ours is uh, All Ray All Day. And okay. of course, it's the government. We love acronyms. So All Ray yeah. stands for Aircraft Launch Recovery Equipment. Okay. So, I like it. Never sleeping. Hmm. So wait. Break it down. Maybe people might not know what arresting and all that arresting gear and all that shit is. So, okay. like, so like make it real simple for us to know what you do on like a day to day basis. Cause I think it's really cool. Right. So 
we were talking about the aircraft carrier before. Um, it's not. It's only twelve hundred feet long, so not a lot of space. Even though it really is a big ship, but um, the aircraft launch recovery equipment um, to get the the jets and the prop aircraft off, we launch them off of catapults. Old ones used to use steam. The new ship uh, uses le- electromagnetism, um, and that launches you know a fifty to sixty thousand pound aircraft from zero to about one hundred eighty knots in two and a half seconds. How fast is one hundred eighty knots? Just shy. Actually, just a little over 200 miles per hour. So it uses magnets, like the roller coasters. Very similar to the roller coasters, but on a way larger energy scale. What happens if like a human body was between that electromagnetic? Literally the same thought I just had. <laughs> I'm like, what would that do? Well, you can't, you can't really get... All of that stuff is underneath the flight deck, so it's not can't really harm a person. There's EMI involved and all that stuff, but the the big harm would be if you're standing down the cat when the aircraft gets launched, you're either gonna get ripped up by the aircraft or sucked in or the shuttle will there's very less very low <laughs> likelihood of you surviving up like, that way. If you walk over, does your taint hair like stand up <laughs> or down rather, I guess? Nope, it's that it's that quick. So it's, like, it's just like a pulse like an on off thing yeah it just picture a bunch of different circuits turning on and off in a sequence so, that travels to launch the aircraft how are the magnets powered it's electric yeah it's electricity that's all I can say is the rest secretive or it's just that simple yeah I mean it's probably out there on Google or China knows about it already <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're getting into the good shit now. This is the top secret stuff. We're gonna keep prying, <laughs> keep going at them, keep keep prying away, peeling the. So it's some kind of proprietary electrical system. Yeah, top secret that only the government and the carriers have classified. Yeah, for official use only. Yes, it's the only ship of its kind right now. Actually, I can't say it's the only ship. There's uh, the Kennedy, which is CVN eighty. Uh, just got flooded in its dry dock for the first time this week, and it's going to be the second Ford class carrier. So, if a carrier was using steam, we could talk about this, right? Yeah. So, this, this, that's the big difference. The steam. Um, How does steam launch an aircraft off a boat? So, picture a huge accumulator, right? That generates a bunch of this pressure, and you open up a valve to a certain uh, position with a certain cycle time and that generates an output of energy and uh, based on there's there's a couple parameters that we use so aircraft weight aircraft speed wind over deck how much ordinance and fuel it has we put into a calculation that tells us what we need to set that um, valve to in order to launch the aircraft at a safe speed what's the valve actually moving though like what piece of it is it like i don't understand how, how just it just works. picture it like a uh like a interconnect switch where you've got hydraulic or pressurized steam supply on one side with it deadheaded while the valve's closed and then when you actuate it and open it it allows steam to flow through it and go to an output and that outputs a shuttle that's connected to the nose gear of the aircraft Oh, so it's actually moving a physical piece that the steam yeah. is moving a piece that's up against the aircraft and it's pushing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So all Navy. So the difference between Navy aircraft first, Marine Corps and Air Force, we have a tail hook that catches the arresting gear when yeah. it goes to land. And then well, we, we were going to get there. Yeah. And then we have a uh, a t- uh, a catapult bar that comes down off of the nose nose gear that is catches the to it. is the actual jet engine only engaging like starting after the action of pushing it is done or no, are they both at the same time so uh before we hit launch the aircraft's in mill power or it'll be in combat rated thrust which is afterburner so which is the- like the hardest fucking thruster you got yeah dang yeah. feel me jess afterburn my nigga yo serious question 
How much is there? Is there actual beef between the military branches? Like my little brother just joined uh, the Marines. He just actually graduated from the like the boot camp or whatever. But is there? Oh, congrats you guys, like, to your freaking yeah! yeah, yeah shout out to cousin. Alec. No, my brother. My brother. We don't even know about this, Jess. Oh, well, my dad. No, you had a fucking brother. Dude. I have three brothers. The Mormons as well. And three sisters. No, you don't. I swear to God. Dude, fuck a you. A brother and a sister with my mom and stepdad, and two brothers and two sisters with my dad and my you stepmom. You hear this motherfucker? Well, he is brown. So, There's lots of so it, are, are there? Is there beef, or is it kind of like Let brotherhood? Start, yeah, fuck you, Chris. Yeah, there, there definitely is beef. So <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if your brother told you this, but the Marines are a part of the Navy. Oh no. Yeah. So I mean, I never asked. They are separate, but they fall under um, the Navy. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, there's definitely beef. Um, the Air Force, we joke around, they always have the most amount of money, the nicest facilities, and their nickname's the Chair Force. Okay. So they just sit around a lot. And then uh, go Navy, <laughs> beat Army. Um, and yeah, the Marines, unfortunately, they just like to sit on our ships, clean their guns, and work out all the time. That's what we joke around about. So, so. so the, the biggest rivalry is between Navy and Army? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you don't say. I'm still picturing a human body getting destroyed by magnets, even though that's not possible. Yeah, not I mean, possible. it's possible, just not. You just might not might not be able to have kids. Damn, dude, it'll suck your nuts straight out of your fucking. <laughs> it's torso. actually it's actually the the waves that it gives off. Damn. Electromagnetic interference (EMI). I have a lot of that in my uh, taint area. <laughs> Afterburn mode, dude. I feel like I'm in full on afterburn mode my whole life, you know? Just You can you can give me a, a shout out on Instagram if anyone wants to see some of the videos I got. I've got I got tons of content from some of the deployments out there of, of some uh arrestments and and cat launches in the aircraft. All right, drop your tag, my brother. What is my tag now? I, don't I, know. I just re- oh, Andrew Nolfi? It's just Andrew Nolfi now. I had to change it, so. A N D R E W N O L F I? Yes, sir. Dang, I wish I could get my first and last name on Instagram, man. There's another Andrew Knives. You believe that? <laughs> There's a couple of them. What the? There's not, dude. Dude, fuck those guys. Fuck them. You know what I'm saying? I'm my first and middle name. That's the workaround. Dude, Andrew Steele. I bet you there's not a single Andrew Steele. No, there's not, dude. Steele, no. <laughs> Andrew okay. Steele, nice. So, after the planes fly off the ship, they do their thing. They're coming back down. Because the landing gear is a lot a big part of what you, a big part of what you worked on on the Ford, right? Yep. So tell us about how that works. We know that they're hooking onto like a giant cable. Probably most people probably could know that because they've seen it on TV. But what's the logistics of like underneath of what's happening? The mechanics of it. So, pretty much when uh, pilots get onto glide slope, they'll call the ball. There's a what the frick? You're talking a foreign language over yeah, here. What the so, hell is glide slope in the ball? Man? So there's a there's a big lens on the port side, which is the left side of the ship, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while they're coming, gotta get in, used to talking civilian mode. I'm trying to talk as best I can <laughs> civilian right now. So there's a Don't big be talking just picture, mode. Just picture a big lamp that uh, they're trying to line their elevation with, um, with a orange ball across the crosshairs as they're coming in. Um, and that's the term calling the ball and that helps guide them into the three wire on the ship, which is the wire that, um, they want to hit every time. Uh, they also get talked, talked to as they're coming in from a, uh, landing signal officer that's on the back after the ship. And, um, there's four cables for them to, to catch with the tail hook. Um, a lot of times if there's like a, a hook skip. Or they completely like miss the hook hits the ground and kind of goes like yeah so if, yeah yeah <laughs> what the what was that? how was it proof? it's like the hooks like bouncing like, yeah so if you if you if you the get old hook skip I've been there if you, before if you get the old hook skip the um, old hook skipper dipper um or just what we call a bolter when you completely miss the cables oh um, don't give me the bolter yeah um. The jet comes back into full power, so that in case he misses it, he takes right back off. Yeah. So with that, and with that said, usually a typical landing is. Um, so there's four. You got four chances. You got four wires to hit. And somebody fucking bolters three, four wires. Is this like, do they when they finally come back around and hit it? 
Do they just get like shit talked for the rest of the day? Like you piece yeah. of shit, you fucking bolter, motherfucker. We, we do. Not until they're back on the boat though, because it's uh, it can definitely play a factor. It's a mind game. Um, yeah, bro, this isn't like a joke, dude. Don't no, don't That's like. No, 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 no. Bro. It's a it's a good yeah. We definitely we. You're not gonna be like. Oh, you fucking kook, you bolted. Come back around. And then he fucking crashes yeah, no, into no, the no, side of the no. ship. Like, as he's no. fucking freaking they're out. Not, they're not surfing. Fucking bolter ass motherfucker, yeah, dude. When, uh, when they get back to the ready room, usually the. You're like, you piece of shit, dude. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk smack when you get back to the ready room. But, um, ready, ready room, room, is, room? Is, is the squadrons. So, every squadron, there's usually about like five to eight on the ship. Um, and it's pretty much your room where you get ready for your flights, your briefs are in, um, it's your hangout. It's pretty much picture it's your, your team's locker room on the ship. Um, How does the wire hold the ship? Because it's not just a wire that's like bolted to the wall or something, right? I mean, No, nah, like- so again, it goes back to like, can't really talk about it, but it's hooked up to an arresting engine underneath the flight deck that um gets set to what the aircraft is weight um, wise or weight, velocity like there's what, all kinds of what their weight is that what their speed it. is yeah and again they're coming in uh usually with super hornet which is what i fly in um coming back we're anywhere between 40 to forty five thousand pounds and we usually only have about somewhere between five to twelve thousand pounds of fuel um and when we hit the wire, you're stopping all of that mass in less than 400 feet. So they got to stop so, fast. And again, if we bolter, you do the ships have it. when a plane lands, like a like a um, what's a plane like a plane that you just regularly fly on, like 747 or something like that? 737, like just yeah. When they commercial. land, how do they stop? So they have reverse thrusters. So the that when they when you hit the ground, they turn the the engines the other way. Yeah, they have a bunch of uh, fins that. And that's off. essentially what breaks the plane. And plus, they have about two thousand feet worth of runway. Of course, but they don't have right. brakes. Like, they do have brakes, but you don't want to use them because they get so hot, and you don't want to do maintenance, maintenance costs, repairs, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So they just basically you you're hit using, the ground, you turn the motors you're using backwards. Using the thrust, and you're just using the space of the runway you but have. Jets don't floor. have that. We do have brakes because you gotta remember we're. But we're no, not reverse ship, thru- no reverse, no reverse, because the jet is basically sh- just shooting air back the jet engine. That's it. And you can't turn it the other way. Yep, we don't yeah. have that capability. So, when we come back to the boat, um, we usually dump fuel, right? Just dump it into the air. Sorry, taxpayers. Yes, we yeah. usually dump. That shit's like how much per gallon, bro? It's got to be like 20, 20 a gallon or something like that. Because we used to get aviation fuel for the jet skis, it was five bucks a gallon. Yeah, and that's one oh. 105. Yeah, so we we have Octane. to anything over 30 miles out um is deemed acceptable to dump. So we have Jeez, that can't be good for the dolphins, hey buddy. I know. It actually it actually <laughs> it actually probably never touches the water. It, it actually it, dissolves. it just it just dissipates in the air. Where That's that, what they want you to think. It does. What about the turtles? <laughs> what about the turtles? Listen. There was Finding Nemo, right? So there's still you're, no. Service. You're probably doing more damage by like drinking out of water bottles. Well, and, like, you got the plastic end up in the ocean. You got to think of it this way though, too. Would We're you rather surfing s- in this, bro? Yeah. Would you rather save some fish or have a huge, massive fire casualty on a ship? Because in case we, that's the whole reason why we dump fuel. So, so that, that doesn't that burn up if if doesn't, there's a crash. You don't have accident. a lot of fuel in case there's an accident on top yeah. of the flight deck. Have you seen an accident on the flight deck? I have never seen, nor do I ever want to be a part of that, because um, yeah. there's been tons of past yeah. casualties. Yeah, yeah, it's not a pretty sight. Yeah. So yeah, they dump the fuel just to make sure that if something does catch on fire, right. it's not going to freaking right map be a freaking bomb. Yeah, it's yeah. it's honestly like a. Can I say that bomb? Yeah, I can say bomb. Yeah, it's fine. Well, it's a pretty yeah. it's a pretty orchestrated um Yeah, 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 process. scene between yeah. dumping fuel but not dumping too much because if you bolter or hook skip, you got to go back up and you got to have enough fuel to make it around oh for another, my God. another pass. Talk about a high pressure scenario. Can you guys believe that this guy's been in one of them freaking fighter jets? Can you believe that? This is kind of kind of making me think. So, obviously That's what I'm talking no, about. No, wait, so we're in trouble. So you're not in the Navy, right? You just work on the ship. 
as an engineer, but where is the ship? It obviously isn't like you. <laughs> it isn't like you so, drive. No, I'm saying so. Yeah, it's no, not no. like you drive so up a, to it every day and like walk onto it. <laughs> so like when you have shifts, do you go stay at this on this fucking ship for like a long time, or do they like pick you up in a plane yeah, so, and fly you to it every time? So right, right, my yeah. past, my my past, my past job. Good question, Jeff. Yeah, it's right. a it's a solid question, solid question. So my past job when I worked on Nimitz class aircraft carriers, um. They, they usually have it down pretty packed because the systems that are on them have been on for like 50 plus years. Um, so if I had to go out, it was because the sailors could not figure it out and it was something that was either a safety concern or something they've never seen before and none of the technical publications to work them through it could be figured out. So I'll either get cotted on, which is uh, a military transport, which is a, prop, a, a, a two-prop plane, um, if it was far out. If it's close to shore, um, I usually get heloed on. Now with the newer, now with the newer ship, um, it's kind of the same process, but um, because it's a newer system, I'm working with the squadrons individually on them training, um, what to expect, how to roll um, with what they've got now. So it's more of a hands-on job right now. Um, so. Hopefully in the next year, maybe even sooner, I don't have to go out um, because that's the expectation to design a system for these guys that they can run with and fix. So right now the ship is just basically, you guys are all like in like the testing phase? Yeah, so the sh- yeah, so the Ford right now um, it's in the water. But it's operable. It's in the water. We've seen it on the news and yeah, everything. Yeah, so the, what you saw in the news was sea trials where it was doing sea those trials. turns. Yeah. So it just got out of what's called PSA, which is uh, post shakedown availability. So when I was on it a year and a half ago, the Navy commissioned it. We did testing, broke a bunch of shit. There was some stuff that uh, the shipbuilder didn't finish, so it goes into the PSA period. Mm-hmm. They fix everything. What's the cost up. on the ship? I think it's around twenty billion dollars right now. Jesus. Who pays for that? You do. We all do. Wait, wait. So I, I make. That's where I mean, taxes go. I mean, I make like twenty bucks an hour. So, I, so I pay for that shit. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, you're, everyone, you're, everyone's paying for it. So out yeah, of that, taxes. Yeah. So out of that twenty billion, say, it takes five years to build the ship. Okay. So split that up over five years, but um, people don't realize this. Like I was at the Pentagon last week. And uh, <laughs> I thought he was at the Pentagon. Yeah, I got no to, big deal. I got to sit with um, the new chief of uh, naval operations and the assistant secretary of the Navy. And uh, I don't really get to deal with money a lot. So that's why I went out there to talk about that. But people don't realize the uh, budget is eight hundred billion dollars for, for military spending per year, per year. And I mean, people even in. The Pentagon say that that's way too much money. We've got to get smarter with our money on how we spend it, because um, that is a lot of money, a lot of money. But we have we have uh, you know legislature that tells us that we have to have ten active carriers for our security um, and for our nation's defense. So we're just getting back to ten now, and um, that's why I've been going out a lot because. This ship specifically has a lot of um, eyes on it in the public and at the government level. And so does military take priority over everything else as far as budget? Depends who you talk to, I would say. Um, now we're getting into politics, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm in, I'm in the defense sector, so I would tell you, yeah, it is. But there's lots of other divisions of the government that don't deal with anything defense. Right. But I'm, I would say that they're just as important. Mm. Just depends who you talk to. Have you ever seen Trump on the ship? Yeah. I got to see him fly in. That was about two years ago for the, uh, I want to say it was the commissioning ceremony. They you had, like him? I do. Right on. Um, that's intense, huh, fellas? But he's he- getting helicoptered out to his, his job site. So you believe that? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta drive old, old Bertha every day you know what I'm saying I think it's yeah it's incredible and like like these people are you know when I say these people I mean I don't know like you people you know <laughs> but like this is a guy who if you seen him in the grocery store like you wouldn't really think you think oh here's a just a short little 
stubby guy with tattoos, wow. you know? Short, stubby guy, dude. You know? Wow. But, what? Jesse over here is trying to... What you trying to say, dude? <laughs> what you trying to say, dude? I'm saying, like, Nolfi doesn't look like much, you know? Wow. You know? <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm just... No, I'm just, I'm just like, you don't ever realize that, you know, people are just, you know, everyday people, but you know, every couple of weeks, this guy is getting helicoptered out to the freaking $20 billion ship to work on the freaking landing gear and, uh, electromagnetic spectrum field. I don't know, man. No field over here looks like he's, he's straight up military. You can usually tell military, you know what I'm saying? You can usually tell the translates into many areas. You can't always pick out a rapist. That's why people are scared to go trip or trick or treating. You can't just look at me and know that I'm into like very sexually feet and charged like situations for for people like furry the furry community fur community fur community. You can't look at my dog and realize she's not gonna bite your face off. You know, she's a pit bull. People Yo, judge she, her. She's breathing yeah. heavy over here. Is that normal? Yeah, because it's all your fucking cigar, dude. I didn't okay. put it out here. She's hot, dude. I know. Not for nothing, though. People ask me what branch I'm, I'm in all the time. Oh, you know? here we go. We were <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm Coast Guard. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Yo, is Coast Guard like the, the, low, the low rank? Yo. I would just say because Andrew definitely looks like a seaman. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> National Cock Guard. There you go. Bro, what's like the adrenaline rush in, like when you're like taking off, bro? Like. So my first time I ever got catted off of the ship. Um, civilian co- civilian vocab. Catapulted off the ship. So they the Navy has a funny thing to do. I thought that do. mean like something with like a, 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 an animal, like a Siamese kitten or something. What? Yeah, no, no, no. We don't kill kittens or anything like that. <laughs> um, no, nah, so first time I got catted off the ship and the way the Navy does this a lot is uh, when a Navy civilian comes out to fix something um they want to make sure it's done right and of course we always want to make sure it's done right but you get the uh privilege of being the first one that's catted off to make sure that your work is yeah, uh, yeah. so if you correct. freaking crash it's yeah. like yeah it's on you so you got a million things going through your mind like did, did i do this yeah did I, oh shit did i do that you get clammy as hell and um yeah it's with like I said, within the blink of an eye, your head is stuck to the back of a seat, and you ain't you're not you're not getting out of it. <laughs> and then uh, at the end of the stroke, which is what we like to call the end of the cat shot, um, you get like a <laughs> little you get a little you well. get a little dip off the. Uh, it goes down a little you get, bit. You get so a little get, bit of a you dip. Get the butterflies. Sometimes you got to remember we're coming off of a ship that's also listing and going up and down in the water. So there's t- times that the sea state is pretty shitty and it looks like you're gonna go right into a wave get swallowed up <laughs> but uh Holy yeah shit, it's, it's it's something i can't really put into perspective unless you actually do it it's it's pretty insane yeah which hopefully well i mean none of us will probably ever get to do that but that's okay you know nolfi to get me on the ship eventually i know it. i'll definitely get you on the ship <laughs> um yeah it's fucking it's so cool dude it's great I think like a lot of times you ever just like watch like a Netflix show, maybe not you so much cause you're already doing it, but like you ever just like watch like a show or like a movie or something and just be like, I just want to do something epic with my life. You know, I just think like, I just want to do something epic, man. Like I want to make a really fucking awesome movie or like I want to be a part of some huge project or just do something really gnarly instead of just going through the freaking monotony of everyday civilian life you know dude i mean what i'm doing now i actually feel like i'm getting bored of it where i'm ready to jump yeah. ship have you ever been ejected out of a plane <laughs> no have you ever like <laughs> have you ever um like sky, uh skydived with the parachute like Nah, I mean they don't ever train you for that. Like you gotta jump out of the plane and pull your own chute or nothing. No, we don't. We don't have any chutes other than <laughs> it being on the ejection seat. So it does so it for you. It does it for you. Yeah, but I, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna jump out of a perfectly good plane. I'll leave that for. Yeah, I guess there's no there's else. no real training for that, right? Well, there's a simulator. Uh, simulator. Yeah. For it, probably. Yeah. Do they make you do that at least? No, I've actually met a couple guys. There's uh, I don't know if 
any of your listeners. So if you're in a plane and it's going down on the testing phase, you're, you're just you're ejecting pulling out. your thing and just yep. praying that everything works out. Yep. <laughs> I'll actually tell you something really scary. When we were doing the new uh, F-35. What's that? Uh, it's the new Joint Strike Fighter. That's a, fight, a jet? It's the fifth gen fighter that uh, we're going with. They uh, actually were at Lakehurst and they had the option of letting the pilot eject or do we disable the software to not let the pilot eject? So there was a period of time when he couldn't eject if something fucking went wrong with the jet. Why is that? Because uh, the software was not fully developed and they didn't want it ejecting him when it wasn't supposed to eject him. So it's one of those catch 22 So we deal with that a lot in uh, mm. research and development phase of new Navy systems. It's like the bird of the bush, you know? Yeah, so there's the a The hen or the line. cock. Or what the hell? <laughs> so is, is there like a union for, for the military branch? Like it, like let's say, you know, orders come from the very top and like you just said, you know, I'm, I'm fly, flying this jet. Now you're telling me that because of protocol, I don't have the option to, to you know, to potentially save my life. Now, I feel like I'm getting fucked here, but so is there like a union or is there like a way for people to kind of, or you just kind of have to bite the bullet no matter what? So usually our test pilots are... Um, Volunteer for that shit, right? They, 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 they know what they're signing themselves up for, um, but they, they listen to us a lot. So they take our word for it. Um, and yeah, I mean, it does usually come from the top all the time. So I'm in a unique situation where I get to do all that stuff that they do, except wear the uniform. Um, but there is a lot of conversation that goes on between active duty and civilian or DOD employees for the Navy to make the right decision. So usually it's not something that's going to jeopardize a life. But again, there's situations where they know it. Everyone knows what they sign themselves up for, so, and everyone accepts it. So you know how like teachers have like ten tenure. What's yeah? What that's like when you like we you're like guaranteed to have your job, right? Right. Is there something like that for the government? No, unfortunately, there is. I was gonna say if you want to make a lot of money, um, you don't work for the government. Um, you go you, private. You go sector? private. Um, I've been in ten years now, so I'm at the point where I'm halfway to um, making the higher percentage of my pension. So it, there's, there's trade-offs and it gets back to when you go to college, you want to make sure you pick something that, I mean, some people like risk, other people like cons, you know, conservative, cushy uh, positions. So for me, working for the government, I'm very lucky where I get a 401k and a pension and pretty cheap health care. Right. So I make six figures a year but I could be making maybe like 40, 50 grand more a year mm -hmm. private. But to me, um, you know, my kids go to daycare on base. It's half the cost of what it would be outside the gate. Um, I don't have to worry about coming in Monday morning and some sneaky motherfucker the Friday before put a, you know, you're done right. notice on my desk. They don't do that. Um, so I'm happy with where I'm at, um, you know, they say most people change their careers four times. Um, for me, I don't think I'm going to leave the government, but I'm definitely looking for the next challenge. Um, it's all, I, the one thing I would recommend to anyone listening to this is don't get comfortable in one position. Always, always move around. Don't think that there's some kind of bad juju to sticking in one position and being afraid to move. The only way you usually get promoted and move up is if you try new things and you just keep building that resume. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Yeah. And like, I like, you know, on a smaller scale, you know, with the juice bar, you know, and people who work there, I'm like always like delegating tasks to them to, you know, learn a little bit more about it, you know, whether it's like scheduling or ordering inventory or whatever it is and like putting that on them. So that way they, you know, learn something new there's a little bit of pressure to like make it work because you know, that helps with performance, you know, you, you know, to, to feel like you're, there's importance, you know, to what you're doing, you know? And yeah, I think like in any job, you know, you need to learn like everything, you know, even with me taking this new job with just like project management, you know, but like, I want to know like how the websites are coded. I want to know how the graphic designer is working. Like I want to know everything 
and like that's just kind of the mentality that i've always had i'm like being paid to work there but i'm learning like so much other shit that i could apply into other areas and other my other businesses that like could help me move forward so it's like it's just a great overall scenario you know uh, i joke with people all the time who work you know, at the juice bar i'm like man you should be paying me to work here you know so i'm just like teaching you so much fucking life shit you know like you can't get this shit on the streets well that's that's really that's really where you can only get it is, is, the, is the streets quote unquote but um holy shit boys one hour at an hour already Ooh. shit <sighs> six words to sum it up catapult that's your first word. I got to give the question? second one. Yeah. Was that a question? Um, dedication. Oh, shit. Wait, why would you pick six, though? There's four Shut of us. Yo, my dude over here picked six words. There's four people here. Does, uh, who Come on, we got two? catapult, dedication. What do you got? Come on, man. Just sum up this, this podcast. Damn. What's the opposite of, what's the, what's the opposite of, of, of victimhood? That, that's what I would choose You know what I'm saying The opposite Like being a victim The opposite of that Victimhood yeah It's like just like Ownership You know what I'm saying Something you know what I'm saying ownership. Like ownership you know yeah. Like resilience Ooh What do you got Nolfi It's tough You guys always do this it's Just like No this happened. is the first time the dude. first huh? Yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesse's got CBD In his vape or something <laughs> <laughs> I'd say uh, flexibility. Ooh, in the bedroom and in the workplace. (laughs) Port side. That's two words, but I got the last one. I got the last one, fellas. Domination. If you're listening to the podcast, we thank you. We thank you, my brothers and my sisters. And remember, we don't charge for the podcast. There's no fee to the Everyday Hustle Show. But guess what? If you're listening and you're learning, it is your duty and your responsibility to share the podcast with someone else. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next week.